Thank you very much. I'll just going to take a couple minutes to um, tell you some of the high points of our, our Kamut um, Ancient Grain Project. Uh, we have, we're also in our 25th year. Uh, um, it's not quite as um, romantic and um, poetic as what we heard from Country National Beef. That was a great presentation. But we we started with a handful of grain 25 years ago. And to um, give you an idea of the grain we're working with, um, the wheat family is divided into three categories uh, based on the number of chromosomes it has. And the ancient grains are distributed among those three categories. In diploid, we find einkorn. In tetraploids, four sets of chromosomes, we find emmer wheat. And then the Coruscant wheat that we have started working with that we uh, market under the crude trademark. Um, hexaploids are spelt and bread wheats in that group. When we look at the um, grains, modern, you need to understand one thing. What has happened with 100 years of modern breeding with wheat? And what has happened is that modern breeding programs have focused on two items primarily. One is yield to make a cheap grain. And they've done everything possible to make a high yield, reducing uh, disease uh, resistance or uh, susceptibility, um, reducing the size of the plant, everything that we can do to make that grain yield more and then have a good excuse to pay the farmers less for it. And the other thing on the other side they've done is to try to make it easier to manufacture. So um, easier to uh, take the brand off, which is fed to the pigs, which is uh, really a high nutritional part of the um, plant for our use. Um, they've changed the protein, the starch, everything to make up bigger loaf volume, which then can be sold um, as more for less. So that's what has happened. Um, the, um, meanwhile, the ancient grains have remained untouched, mainly because they're low in yield. But they have some wonderful characteristics such as taste and, and very high nutrition. We've done a lot of research to understand why people can eat ancient grains like Kamut Bran Coruscant on wheat and cannot eat modern wheat. And we found that it's not one thing. It's several things uh, that have to do with the change of the starch, the change of the protein, the change of the antioxidants. We're finding that there's anti-inflammatory properties in the ancient grains of uh, Kamut Bran wheat that modern wheat doesn't have. There's all kinds of things that really have helped us to keep healthy. And that is gone in modern wheat, and a lot of people cannot digest it anymore. And so we're seeing a time, I think, when we can harken back to um, look for some of these things that we can identify and make sure that they are included in new breeding programs um, <clears throat> or used to improve the, um, the uh, grain that we have on the market. Um, I don't have time to go into the origin and everything. Uh oh, that, that thing showed up. I'll just click it close. Can I do that? Okay. Quit. Will it? I, I'm pretty scary about these things. Anyway, while she's fixing that for me, <laughs> um, what we found um, in the beginning, we knew that this grain was similar to Durham, and we told people, well, you can make great pasta. I don't know if you can make bread, but we had people that made bread with it. And what we tried to do is put together um, uh, um, partnerships with very high quality manufacturing companies. So we went to the best um, cereal making companies. Now I won't go forward or backward. If I hit it, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> anyway, the, uh, the first product that went nationwide was a, a cereal, cold cereal made by Arrowhead Mills. And when that happened, then we had a, a lot of people copying that in the country. There we go. So, okay. Um, the um, I have to head to where we are now. Um, let me, well, I should show you this map. And what it resulted in this country is it became a grain primarily for cold cereal. This is the area where we have the best um, success growing this grain. It's a low yielding grain, about yields about 20 bushels the acre, but we we pay 10 to 15 dollars a bushel for it. So they compared to this grain area of the northern Great Plains, it's a very profitable crop for organic farmers. Um, we now have about 160 organic farmers growing over 40,000 acres. So that's where we are now in our production, and it's growing all, all the time. Where, it, where we go further east or south into the grain belt, we get more disease with it, and so it doesn't, um, it 
doesn't work well there. The Kamut name actually came from a hieroglyphic dictionary we found and means great in, um, in ancient Egypt. The, um, this is the first product, as I, as I mentioned, and one of the first experiments we did with it, we passed it out to our friends and a lady who couldn't eat wheat said to us, well, this is fantastic, I, what is this stuff? Because when I eat it, it makes me feel better. And not only could she eat it, but her health improved. And that was our first clue that was very special about that. And after a few years in America, as I mentioned, some were cereals. But when we went to Europe in uh, 1992, the first products they produced there were breads and, and pasta. And so the diversification we saw in Europe in products was here from the beginning and just increased and increased. Now we have things like the Kamut milk there, which is like rice milk, uh, Kamut um, syrup, like barley syrup you see in America, and Kamut pieces that we don't see in America. We have um, 2,000 different Kamut products in the world now, and 90% of them are found in Italy. Italy takes over 65% of all the grain produced. And this is to give you a little bit of an idea of our growth, and the amount of the growth is a little bit scary. It gets sometimes ahead of our, our um, ability to produce. So we're always looking for new organic growers <coughs> and places to grow it. A lot of questions we've had to answer regarding our trademark. People think we have a trademark, it means we own the grain. But that's not true. The trademark is not a patent, it's a, um, nor is it the name of the grain. Uh, the Kamu tra trademark, for example, stands for something unique. It guarantees standards are met and prevents fraud and is a quality seal for approval and it's established for brand recognition. And what we, the standards, some of the standards, I'll just get, uh, I'll go through a couple of these, it means that it's always organically grown, it has to have high protein, high in selenium, um, be free of modern wheat and free of diseases. Um, we have a philosophy that everybody wins, that the farmers have a profitable and stable price, the manufacturers have a uh, consistent product for fair price, the diversity of our food is increased and organic production is um, promoted. Uh, we use contracts, um, we try to encourage seeding right after green manure crops, we have the highest protein possible. Um, we have a non-GMO policy, we analyze for pesticides, so we guarantee that they're clean. We have audit systems that guarantees that no one's um, mixing modern grain with it and kind of going around the system. Here's a, the one thing I wanted to leave with you, eight marketing tips I have learned in my 25 years of different businesses. Start small, minimize debt, be bold, and build on success. Find good partners with strengths to cover your deficiencies. It's all about personal relationships. Believe in what you do. The bigger the company, this has been my experience, the bigger the company you deal with, the less fun there is. Um, be honest, be fair, be truthful, it all goes to that trust that we've heard several others mention so far this morning. Exceed your customer's expectations, deliver a little bit earlier, uh, fill the bag a little fuller, those sorts of things. Work so everybody wins. Be a resource to your customer. When you're doing something new, your customers are going to have some trouble with that. Be a help to them. Um, and make sure that they are successful. And know more about your product than anybody else does. It's easy to have your product pulled, uh, pulled into the market. It's easier to have into the market than the pushing from this side of the ocean. And um, look for lots of new ideas in case some might turn out. And that's what I try to do is have a new idea that um, will, um, will turn into something to buy. In, in um, summary, this is our, our uh, mission statement. To promote organic agriculture, support organic farmers, increase diversity of crops and diets, protect the heritage of a high quality, delicious grain for the benefit of this and future generations. Thank you very much. Thank you.